Okay, Jessica, it's been a pleasure corresponding you with uh, in the emails. This is Matthew with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut reading lenses for your Ray-Ban 5121 Color 2000. I'm going to take it out. This is exactly how Ray-Ban ships it to me with their little skew card, the black leather Wayfarer case, your Wayfarer frames with a little plastic sleeve that Ray-Ban puts on there for shipping. If they think it's a good idea to put one on one temple, I'm going to put a second one on there to send it to you. That's the only thing I do differently. I add on to Ray-Ban. And actually, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that comes inside the case. Um, let me move all this aside, and I'm going to get to work. The first thing I'm going to do is pop out your original demo lenses that Ray-Ban puts in there. I'm going to send these to you, so if you ever want to sell these frames years from now, you'll have the original lenses. They belong to you. Now, this is your frame. It's based on the original Wayfarer, the sunglasses. They just put the ophthalmic glasses in there, and they call it the 5121. So I'm going to put your Italian design frame into my Italian Santinelli LE1000 patternless edger, and it's going to trace the shape of your right lens, and then it's going to pop over and trace the shape of your left lens. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality, you pay for the frame and you get free single vision lenses, either reading glasses, which these will be, or the people who need them for distance. So I'm going to pull your shape up, put in the pupillary distance, I'm going to type what type of lens material this is. This is a polycarbonate lens with anti-glare coating, so I'm going to cut it on the soft cycle. The anti-glare, in fact, let me just grab another lens in comparable power. Let me see, this is your right lens, minus 50, yeah. The anti-glare coating, it eliminates glare when driving at night, although these are your reading glasses. But it's also an anti-reflection lens. You can see this lens on the right that does not have that coating is showing the reflection of the fluorescent lights overhead. The other nice thing about this is if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up. So yours is plus 150 minus 50 at 90. I'm going to spin the axis wheel on my Marco 101 lensometer pull up the power of 1 plus 150, rotate your lens until I find the optical center and the sphere power comes in. I check your astigmatism correction, which is minus 50, which is two steps, and I'll explain that in a moment. I'm going to put some dots on here. I'm just going to darken these so you can be able to see them later. This is the right lens, marked right. Now let's do your left lens, plus 150, minus 75 at 90, the same axis. That rarely happens, so plus 150. Although you do have three steps of astigmatism correction in the left eye. Yep, that lines up perfectly. Let's put some dots on here. Darken those dots so the folks at home can see it and mark that one L for left. So I'm going to put a block on here. This block is what's going to hold it in place while it's cutting. I do have to put a little double-sided adhesive sticker on there. The black side is the sticky, as you see it's sticking to my finger. I'm going to put it on there, peel off the other side making that sticky and line up your optical center that is your right lens now let's do your left the anti-glare coating that you have it is not necessary to use a wet cleaner anymore that is now obsolete all you will ever need to use is your ray-ban cleaning cloth or the extra one that i will provide and since you are jessica you are going to get a pink one all right but one of the things about the anti-glare coating is it makes it a little bit more slippery because it's a hydrophobic surface, meaning that it hates water. So I'm going to put an extra little sticker on here so it does not slide while it's cutting. Now I'm going to put this in the chuck, and it's going to trace the shape of your frame onto the lens to make sure it is large enough to cut out, and it will. I've done the measurements in advance, but this is just a routine operation I cannot get around. So it is now tracing the shape of your frame onto the concave side of the lens, which is closest to your eyelashes. Once it has done that, it's going to trace the convex side of the lens. Now these aspheric lenses are flatter, even though it's the convex side, it still does not give you that fishbowl appearance. These are high quality premium lenses, which I'll explain in a moment. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom on the left, it is like a heavy grit sandpaper. This wheel in the center is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the frame. This is going to get loud and I'll have to close the door, but for now I just want you to see your prescription lens. Strike the cutting wheel and let's get started. Let's get this party started. So I'm going to close that. Let me get a 
tissue and see if I can dry this door off so you can watch. It is now 746 on Wednesday, March 5th, 44 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina, at least according to my Samsung Gear watch. This whole process will take about 15 minutes and hopefully you enjoy watching. And if you don't enjoy it, you're stuck watching anyway, like I am. So I'll have a cup of tea and enjoy. For those of you keeping score at home, I am drinking Earl Grey tonight. Now, your prescription, and I wrote it down on my very scientific uh, pad here, but your right eye is plus 75, minus 50 at 90. Your left eye is plus 75, minus 75 at 90 with a one add in your bifocal. These are reading glasses, so you would add these two numbers together. And because you told me that plus 175 is too strong, we backed it off one step to 150 minus 50 at 90, plus 150 minus 75. Now everything is in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, and so on. So for your distance, you need three steps correction in both eyes. As reading glasses, we add the additional four steps, which is one, making it, uh, well, it would be full power, it would be plus 175, but we're doing 150, so that is six steps of power. You have two steps of astigmatism correction, and there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. Um, so you have two steps correction. This first number magnifies everything. The second number takes away the fuzzy edges. That's what astigmatism is. It makes sixes and eights look alike. It makes the letters P and F look alike. And this just tells us where to fine tune that knob to make everything nice and crisp at 90 degrees. If my elbow were zero and my fingertip were 180 in a circle from zero to 180, that is the linear 90 and 270 is the vertical meridian. We turn that knob to 90 to clear everything up in both eyes, which is actually rare. This is just an arbitrary number that shows us where to fine tune things. These are real steps, real powers. This just varies with everyone and it's just rare to see the same step in both eyes. But that just shows Jessica that you got special eyes special eyes that need extra magnification, but we all need extra magnification. I've got some really strong magnifiers that I use here in the lab. In fact, when I hold this up over my, the words printed in the back, you should see some weird effects going on. That's when I have to inspect lenses frames and if I need to tighten a black screw in a black frame. And you were asking earlier, let me show you the triple barrel metal hinge that you get on a Wayfair. It has two rivets on each side. One is blocked by the Ray-Ban logo. The other one is known as the shield, which is just the back side of the rivet. So I'm actually going to be quite surprised if this fits. But the first thing I'm going to do, well, the first thing I'm going to do is dry this off so I don't drop it. I'm going to go to my hand stone and put a safety bevel. You still have a little bit of rough edges. So I'm going to go around the edge, use my thumbnail to scrape off any extra residue. Drop it on the counter. Can you see that nice and clear? And now wipe it onto the floor. The part I love saying in every video, kids, I am a professional. I went to school for years to learn how to wipe stuff on the floor. Don't try and do this at home. All right, to see if the lens fits, I tuck it in at the outside corner and push down at the nose. It does not. I did not expect it to fit. You can always cut more off a lens. You can never add back to it. So I'm going to take a tenth of a millimeter off, hit the retouch button. And instead of going down onto the cutting wheel, it's just going to go onto the bevel wheel in the center and slowly but surely, it's going to go all the way around and take a tenth of a millimeter off and then I'll test to make sure it fits. I make the lenses easy enough to pop in and out because if you want that invisible bifocal or any other type of bifocal, send me a picture of you wearing these. If I have your face in the background, I can blow up your picture on the computer, set this frame down on the other end where if this R were your nose, I could set it on there. I would see your eyes. And now I can measure your pupillary distance and the vertical height of the bifocal. This is what we were discussing in the email. I need you to send me a picture of these, of you wearing this frame so I can blow the picture up on my end, use another frame as an example to know that it's the right size and then I can measure. Then I can send you the invisible bifocal and you can pop these lenses out and pop the new ones in there and then years from now you only have to buy lenses from me you can keep using this frame which will last you for 10 years
or more. This thing is built like a tank. These hinges, I know you bought a counterfeit one one time and you're real suspicious and asked where these are metal hinges. These are metal hinges and it's known as the triple barrel, meaning that most glasses, including mine, which is the new Wayfair, have one hinge. I don't know if you can see this. I'm wearing color 6012 in the new Wayfair. It has a single hinge, which essentially is a single belt loop. These have three belt loops, if you will, that go together and then have one screw. This thing is built like a tank. Mine only has one. So let's pop this out, set the frame down here, pull this out, put the old safety bevel, use my thumbnail to scrape that residue off. You know what? I didn't dry the lens off. It's real embarrassing if I ever drop a lens on my rubber pad here, the one I have to stand on for 15 hours a day. So again, to make sure it fits, I tuck the lens in at the outside corner and using my thumbs, I push down. It does not. I'm going to take it down another tenth of a millimeter. The right lens always takes the longest. Once I get the size down, I can cut the left with no problem. I could use heat to pop the lens in. Most, most opticians will to cut corners and save on time. You can move this around. These are glass beads, polished glass beads that individually, of course it might be hard to see since they're clear, essentially it's like a crock pot that heats these up. But once you heat up the frame, it makes it more pliable, where it makes it easier to pop the lens in. I like to do what's known as the cold mount. I pop it in without ever heating up this frame front for several reasons. If the lens is ever too large, it will cause the frame to roll, which means if you can imagine this on a larger scale, if this were the bevel that holds your lens in place, if the frame were to roll, it would cause the top of the frame and bottom to curve outward. That's why your lens keeps falling out. I make sure it just snaps in there easily so no force is ever applied on this frame. I do use heat to adjust the temples for anyone here. Now this is a good time to bring it up. 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. If these are too loose or too tight, just tell them they'll know what to do. If it's too tight, they'll loosen it here. If it's crooked or high on one side, just tell them it only takes about 20 to 30 seconds to adjust this frame. In fact, I can even show you if it's too high on one side, on the high side, you want to take this, hold the frame, and slightly push up at this hinge. You're not going to hurt this frame. This thing, as I told you, is built like a tank. If this goes higher, it makes the frame sit lower on this side, and it won't be crooked. All of my glasses, if I pull one off the wall here, I'll use the blue rubber that I've worn into the ground. I have one ear that's higher than the other, so when I tip on it, it wobbles on the table, but it sits level on me. So again, let's dry this off and try and get this mounted into your frame. Once again with the safety bevel, once again onto the counter, once again onto the floor. You're starting to see repetition here. Hmm. Oh, that life-giving water. Okay, again, I put the corner close to me. I tuck it into the outside corner and using my thumbs, I push down on the lens. That is perfect. Let's go ahead and start cutting your left lens. Flip this over and hit start. That's going to close. And just like before, there's no way to get around this. This is going to trace the shape of your frame onto the lens again. While it is doing that, I'm going to continue to work. Since you have seen this before, this is nothing new. Let me keep going and get started. So I need. This block is no longer necessary. I'm going to take this off, pull that off. I had a second cloth around here somewhere. There we go. Let me dry this again. Pull off. Let me darken your optical center so we can measure that later. Pull the sticker off. And then, now it's stuck to my finger. I'm going to stick it right there. Um, I'm going to put this into my Marco 101 lensometer. And the axis wheel is on 90 from before. Double check that this reads plus 150. You can see there's one and two, and this is exactly halfway between one and two, making it 150. Check your stigmatism correction, which is minus 50, and that brings it back to plus one. Now, if you notice, you see how flat that lens in, it does not bulge. A lot of online companies will sell you plastic lenses, and they are good for years and years. There's nothing wrong with a plastic lens. It's just that these lenses are 40% thinner and lighter than plastic. 
But the other qualities of this polycarbonate is that it's virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection in them. So this is like permanent sunscreen for your eyes while you're wearing this frame. Now we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays does to your skin. Your, your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So this is why you need to wear UV protection all of the time. Constant exposure to UV will produce cataracts a little bit earlier. Cataracts, you have a crystalline lens in your eye. It's a little almond shaped thing that is suspended by literally suspenders and it's almost like the substance of an egg, the white of an egg, but as you age it hardens and that's what cataracts is. Your, your eye gets cloudy, it's no longer clear. You take your glasses off and clean them and clean them, but you just can't get them clean because it's, it's foggy on the inside, not on the outside, which is the lens. As you can see, it's still completely flat, it's done cutting, now it's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So, the other nice thing about these, so we have the polycarbonate lenses which are thinner and lighter, unbreakable, bulletproof, blah, 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 UVA, UVB. You've all heard this before, Jessica, in Detroit, Michigan. Um, other lenses are spherical which give you that bulging fishbowl effect. I use aspheric lenses which are much flatter I don't know how well you can see this but that is it does not poke out beyond the frame this is nice this is high quality I do my own lab work now again all the other places start selling you lenses for around forty dollars for plastic they charge you about twenty or thirty dollars more for polycarbonate and then they charge you another twenty or thirty more for the aspheric you get that for free from me when you buy the frame I can go up to high index. I can do any of the 16, 167, 170, 174 high index. I prefer to work with poly. It's a great material. It's very forgiving. You can pop them in and out. And by the way, I do want to show you, should you ever want to change your lenses, in order to take the lenses out with your thumb at the nose, I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand. You can torque the frame. It's not going to hurt it. But using my thumb, I push out at the nose. Out comes your lens in order to pop it in. Like you saw before, I turn the frame upright, tuck it in at the outside corner first, and then using your thumbs, push down at the nose, and the lens snaps right in there. These are unbreakable lenses. You're not going to hurt your lens by doing this. You're not going to hurt your frame. Although, do this in room temperature. If it's zero degrees outside in Detroit, I do worry about plastic becoming brittle, so do it at room temperature. Okay, so now your left lens, which I did not dry off. I'm living dangerously especially with that anti-glare coating on there because it makes it a little bit more slippery. Scrape that off onto the floor and now let's try mounting it into the frame. I put the left lens closest to me before I was working like that. Now I'm going to flip this around, tuck it in at the outside corner, press down with the nose, it snaps in perfectly. I can push it back out using my thumb at the nose. I grab the opposite lens and push, out it comes. To tuck it back in, I flip the frame upright and again push it down at the nose. Let's pull this block off, dry this off again. Looks like there's a good optical center dot. Put that there. Now I'm going to measure 62. Let me see what I can use. I'm going to get a white background here. Let me do better than that because there's lenses in there. Let me pull out one of my prescription cards. Hold this up and now flip that around. And I'm actually getting 62 millimeters, which is the average for reading glasses. Hopefully you can see this. There's the 60 and then two ticks of the, of the two millimeters that is. On addition to 60 gives me 62. I'm gonna use my optical grade acetone which costs $40 a bottle. Can you believe that for a quart? So I use it sparingly. Clean off the red dots. And then one more thing I wanna do before I put this all back into Ray-Ban's original packaging is what's known as putting the frame in standard alignment, which is a three-point stance. The three points, the bottom of the frame being one and each temple tip being two and three. So I put this on the counter and press down. And there is no wobble. I flip it over, do the same thing. I close each hinge to make sure it closes on top of one another and that it has the same amount of torque on each side. It does. Jessica L. in Detroit, Michigan. 
I hope you have enjoyed watching your reading glasses being made and I was able to answer some questions for you. I'm about to get everything packaged up and mailed back to you in the original manufacturing so you know it's the real deal. I hope it's been fun for you watching your glasses being made. Thank you for helping me chase my American dream. And this is one of the many, many ways I can bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.